Good morning. This weekend, Chabad Rabbi Tzvi Kogan's brutal kidnapping and murder in the UAE shocked and saddened the state of Israel. It was a monstrous act of terror that demands swift justice. Israel will use every tool at its disposal to ensure that those responsible, as well as their orchestrators, are brought to justice. None will escape. We deeply appreciate the cooperation of the United Arab Emirates in investigating this terrible crime. Together, we will strengthen the bonds of peace that take the axis of evil seeks to destroy. Today, we must also address the ICC's shameful decision. However, just yesterday, Hezbollah launched over 500 rockets at millions of Israeli citizens. 500 rockets rained down on innocent families, schools, and homes, leaving millions of civilians scrambling for shelter. Yet, in the eyes of the ICC, it is the democratically elected leaders acting to defend their people who are somehow the criminals. By issuing arrest warrants for Prime Minister Netanyahu and former Defense Minister Gallant, the ICC has abandoned its mission of justice. It has reduced itself to a political weapon, targeting democracies while turning blind eye to the atrocities of the world's worst regimes. This is not justice. It is diplomatic terrorism. Now Israel is the target. Tomorrow it could be any nation that values its sovereignty. The ICC's actions are a betrayal of the international system and a mockery of the principle it was founded to uphold. Also today, the world and the UN marks the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. Rather than advocating for the release of the 13 women being held by Hamas rapists, we must instead combat diplomatic terrorism. Liri, Karina, Shiri, Agam, Daniela, Judy, Romy, Inbar, Ofra, Neama, Doron, Arbel, Emily, we will never forget you, never abandon you, and we will never stop fighting for your release. Israel will not be intimidated or deterred. We will defend our people, we will fight for the freedom of the hostages, and we will stand firm against the forces that seek to undermine peace and justice. Thank you. Ambassador Margaret Bashir, Voice of America. Um, there are reports this morning that Israel has agreed in principle to a ceasefire with Lebanon, with Hezbollah specifically. Uh, can you confirm it? Can you give us some details? So we are uh, moving forward uh, on this front. As I said many times, you know, our goal was very clear, which is to push Hezbollah north uh, of the Litani River. Um, we haven't finalized it, but we are moving forward. I, I I assume that the cabinet will meet uh, today or tomorrow to discuss it. Uh, and uh, I, I think for us it's important what will happen after, that uh, Hezbollah will not be allowed to come back to the fence, and we will do whatever is necessary to guarantee it. We learned the lessons from 2006. Uh, yes. That had been, Ambassador, that had been one of the sticking points, uh, according to reports, that Israel wanted the right to go back into Lebanon to attack Hezbollah if they felt the need to. Uh, the Lebanese rejected that out of hand. So is that still in the proposal that's being uh, considered? So I, I said it uh, very specifically. We learned the lessons from Resolution 1701, uh, and we will make sure that we will have the ability to neutralize any threat that will not be dealt uh, in southern Lebanon. Uh, I hope that the th Lebanese army uh, will take care uh, of that in the future, but if they will fail again, we will be there. It's yes, please. Shudaj with China Central Television. A follow-up uh, with uh, Maggie's question. On the ceasefire, we know that's close or in principle agreed that. We heard this like a couple of months ago when Israel is dealing with uh, negotiating a deal with Hamas. So what would be different this time? And secondly, I guess, um, what do you think the role of UNIFIL would play during the ceasefire? Thank you. Well, first I want to, to remind you that it was uh, uh, Lebanon and Hezbollah who made the linkage between uh, ceasefire 
with Lebanon and a ceasefire with Hamas. It is not the case today, and we are moving forward with that front, uh, with that front to have a ceasefire uh, with Lebanon. Regarding UNIFIL, UNIFIL will stay there. We will coordinate uh, our activities with the UNIFIL, and I expect that they will be more effective this time. They, they will have to report what they are seeing. They failed on that front. We don't expect them to fight, but to report that their mandate, and they have to do it. Yes, please. The, the, the first question, what I mean is actually, uh, in, Hamas, uh, in Gaza, this deal has been talking like for months, but always like those final details that cannot be reached. What would be different this time with Hamas? Because you said with Hamas or with Hezbollah. Sorry, with Hezbollah. What, what would be the, well, uh, the details? you know, with Hezbollah or with Lebanon, actually, it's easier because you're dealing with a, with a nation, with a country. Uh, the negotiators can receive answers. Uh, with Hamas, it's much more difficult. You're dealing with a terrorist organization. It's very hard to get answers. You know, uh, until today, we haven't received a, a, a list of the hostages who are still alive, or a proof of life. So it, it's a huge difference between dealing with Lebanon and dealing with Hamas. Yes, it is. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Um, what role do you see for the United Nations in any agreement with Hezbollah for UNIFIL? Um, there's been talk of a role for the United States. And how soon do you expect this to happen? Are we talking about the next few days? So first of all, I expect that you, that you will have stages. You know, it's not going to happen overnight. There will be a few stages, few requirements. You know, the, the most important condition for us is, is the withdrawal of Hezbollah north of the Litani. We said it from the beginning that that will be uh, our goal in this war. Then there will be other stages in the agreement. Regarding the UN, as far as I know, the UN is not part of the agreement, but the presence of UNIFIL over there uh, is important. Uh, and we are grateful for that. I'm in constant uh, connection uh, with the peacekeeping uh, department uh, uh, at the UN. Uh, they are visiting the area. They are uh, involved. They know about what's happening. Uh, and I think they have also to take advantage of this situation and make sure that the, the UNIFIL presence uh, is more effective. Ambassador, Thank could I just ask you one on the rabbi, on Rabbi Kogan? Sure. Uh, you mentioned the axis of evil. So are you, is Israel pointing fingers at Iran or one of its proxies in his uh, murder in UAE? Well, we, we cannot go into details yet, but it's, it's all known that it, it wasn't like uh, a terror attack that came from the UAE itself. You know, it was imported. You know, uh, those uh, terrorists who brought there, who kidnapped the rabbi, uh, and you know, I, I, I know the rabbi and I know the work he did there, and it is unfortunate because the UAE is it's known for tolerance uh, and they respect all religion. Uh, and I think those people who chose the location of the UAE to commit such a horrible crime, it's shameful. Uh, and I trust that the UAE government will make sure that they will pay the price for that. And Ambassador, I'm sorry, one more. Um, you often tell us Israel is the biggest democracy in the Middle East. Why is the government sanctioning Haaretz for its reporting? Well, uh, you know, I think that's for the government of Israel to decide which papers they subscribe to. You know, we all have the options to decide about that. Uh, and that's also a decision of the government or the ministers which newspapers that they want to read. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, share, and hit subscribe to stay updated with our latest content. Until next time, stay informed and inspired. This is Dijabnik signing off.